Hello and welcome to Tone, Rhythm and Narrative in Abstract Comics by myself, Gareth A. Hopkins. This was originally presented at the 2022 Light and Memory Conference. Um, you can see there the link is www.lightandmemory.org. Uh, I've got quite a lot of slides to get through, so let's crack on. This presentation came title first, and when I sat down to write the presentation based on the title that I had come up with, I realized that I hadn't got a lot to say and I'd probably need more time to say it than I had as well. So I did what I normally do and stare at my desk. Uh, on the desk, you can see a page of artwork that I was, I was stuck on and couldn't make any progress on. You can see a Crayola pen that I found in the street and doesn't actually do anything unless you've got special paper. Um, and you can see the general mess that I live in every day. Here's me. I'm Gareth A. Hopkins, and what I do is make art and comics, um, mostly abstract comics. When I put these slides together, I thought that putting the words and titles of the slides in funny arrangements on the side of the page would be cool and interesting and sort of maybe mimic my approach to comics. And although it's come across as a bit awkward and slightly superficial, it's not that far off how I make comics. Over the past few years, I've made a fair number of comics. Uh, I make them all by myself for the most part. I'm sure there's some sort of significant thing that I've forgotten, but um, yeah, so for the most part, I make comics by myself. Uh, and again, for the most part, most they've all been under the explosive sweet freezer raises banner over the past few years. And here's some examples of that. Um, you can see that they're all sort of joined by this pyramid um, motif and the covers, uh, including Children of the Valley, where it's been flipped upside down. Um, I'll come back to some of these comics during the rest of the presentation, but some of them I won't mention ever again. So for anyone who isn't familiar with the standard way of making comics, here's a very, very condensed rundown. And this isn't true for everybody that makes comics, um, but sort of like it's, it's a decent starting place. So what usually happens is that a script will be written by a writer. Uh, that will be passed off to someone to pencil the page um, and they will make a lot of creative decisions about um, pacing and um, which what actually have like what actually gets drawn on the page that's the penciler's job and then that will be handed off to an inker who will um, prepare that page for print by um, ad ad essentially adding black over the pencils um, it's sort of a hangover from the old way of preparing pages for print um, where they need to be um, ca shot by camera and need to be really high contrast but it's sort of like hung on uh often nowadays the pencil and the ink might be the same person um but for commercial comics that it tends to be split uh, a job that's split out between two people after that's handed off to a colorist who will color the page and often the colorist will also get that page ready for print um and the colorist might be split into two jobs as well. I'm going into too much detail. And then there's the letterer who will take the script and then apply that to the artwork on the page. Um, what I do uh, increasingly is I do all these jobs myself, but I also um, do, a, do them in funny orders. So... Um, for a long time i was making the artwork which would be stages two and three and then doing the script and then doing the lettering but recently i've started with the coloring and then done the script and then done the artwork um and just sort of playing around with that here's a breakdown of my usual process um the a three-stage process of how i would normally go about stuff so the first one is i make lots of pages um and whatever I fancy doing it at the time, I will uh, use that approach to make a, a page of comics art. Um, you can see here that um, these are pages from my current 
project the sluice which i'm doing on patreon where every day i add uh, i create a new page and, and add it to the the patreon site um the next stage is to write something so um i will uh, either responding to something that i've drawn or an idea i'll generally send myself emails um in this case this is the script to a comic i made recently called the suit or suit um where i just sat down and wrote the most like pretty much the entire script in one email but uh, more often than not i will send myself emails as ideas come in and end up with uh, an email chain of about 20 or so emails uh, and then i'll copy and paste that into word to make it easier to work with once it's ready and then stage three i will pick from the pile so i'll go through all of the pages i have which i haven't used and sometimes ones i have used before and pick out the ones that i want to use in the comic so um, in this instance um, i uh, and i think this is still from the suit i picked out pages from the sluice which i'd done this sort of reverse inking where i'd started with the coloring and then inked over the colors um, because I wanted to use them all in one place and I thought they might work quite well with the script I'd written. And then the fourth stage of the three stage process I <laughs> mentioned earlier is this. So ostensibly it's the lettering process but um, it's a lot happens at once. You can I've sort of making coffee lettering rewriting messing with contrast and levels just faffing about with this page and all the other pages in the comic until they're done especially with a large project um petricor took two or three weeks to get through um of uh, opening all the files up putting some script in messing the script about um but this is the stage where i still play a lot um and so um if the if the script doesn't exactly match the artwork, then I'm able to change it as I go. I can split captions up, I can group them together um, and rework what I've written so that it better fits the artwork. Um, and equally while I'm doing this stage, I'm also sort of pre making sure that the finished pages are uh, saved in multiple formats. So I've got a PSD version, I've got a JPEG version, I've got whatever uh, versions I need for print, uh, that they're all in the right color modes and all that stuff. Um, a quick word about lettering though, is that I keep saying that I do lettering, um, which does a disservice to people who do it properly. Um, lettering is a really finely honed skill for professional people who do it. Um, and it's sort of like the invisible part of comics because when it's done well, the reader won't be aware that it's been done well. They'll just skip over, they'll just skip through the comic and they won't be making conscious, um, uh, uh, conscious like <laughs> decisions about whether or not they like the lettering. They'll be thinking about the script, they'll be thinking about the art, they'll be thinking about the stories and characters, but they won't be thinking about the lettering. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, although I do lettering, I don't consider myself a letterer. So now we've been through my process, uh, there's some examples of uh, what that, how that manifests, how that process sort of gives results and what the benefits are of it. So um, here's two pages from my autobiographical graphic novel, Petricor. On the, and I've used it as an example of instinct, instinct and intent. So uh, what my working process does is it means that as I'm working, and as I said before, I get to make decisions as I go. Uh, and so although often when I create the art, there's no uh, final goal in mind as I'm working, um, the way that I work means that when I have, when I need to do something, I can do it and I can do it with intent. So on the left, there's a page here from the start of the book. Uh, I think it's the first page in the book, actually. 
uh, or maybe this, I can't remember. I should know. I spent bloody ages making it. Um, but the actual artwork is uh, sort of an abstracted trip to the beach with my family. Um, this shape here, it's a stand in for my son uh, with the shoreline running here. Uh, and there's uh, a boat that had washed up on the beach here. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, but over the top of that, I've just added in bold, there are no new ideas as a, as a statement, which has nothing to do with the uh, literal content behind these images, but sits nicely in the tone caused by how I've drawn them, if that makes sense. Um, Let's carry on in case it doesn't. Uh, the other one here is that, as I said, I'd, I'd made all the artwork before I'd sat down to actually decide what the artwork was going to be used for. And one of the things that I'd done when I was working on the artwork is um, put in these little caption things. Um, and so when I actually came to turn it into a book, I was able to directly reference the artwork when I was scripting. So the, the captions in this section of the comic are me talking directly to my wife, um, not about the artwork, but able to reference the artwork as I go. Um, I, as, um, a, as an artist, encourage mistakes in order to exploit them. Um, and that's when I make the actual artwork for the pages. Uh, which I could I could go into a lot more than I'm going to now, um, but during the sort of the process that I went through, there are two things worth pointing out here. So one is that when I'm working on the pages, I'll put down all the captions um, on the page, and then I will copy. And once I've done with that, the, the next thing I'll do is copy and paste the next page in behind the letters, and sometimes. Sometimes that means that I can pick out um, particular captions to create rhymes. Um, so in this instance, I started here with copper and this little box here. And once I'd done all this and copied this page in, I really liked that that word sat outside in its own little context. But then at the same time, I wanted to flip it. So I just changed it to Cooper, uh, but it creates a rhyme across those two pages. Um, and then the other thing here is that when I was typing out the script that I'd written, I managed to um, type the word just with two J's in it. But I really like the way that that word read with the two J's. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but it, uh, in my head, it reads really interestingly. Um, the next one is mood. So uh, the mood of the pages can suggest stories for me to write. Um, the example I've put here is from a comic I made called The Church. Um, and I made the artwork for it by drawing over the top of um, pages of uh, <laughs> misprinted comics. So I tried to print out a comic, it all went wrong. And then I drew over the top of all the, the stuff that had been printed out wrong. And once I'd done that, to me, it told a story, um, not necessarily in the order it was finally presented, but it told a story of sort of like uh, a haunted beach at night. So um, this is the sky maybe, and it looked like coastline to me. And then that got mixed in with a, a nightmare which my daughter had had about Animal Crossing. Um, and then some other ideas are pulled in. Oh, it reminded me of uh, the church OP in Portland, which I've said that as if anybody knows what it is. I didn't even know what it was until I had to look it up. Doesn't matter. Um, all these ideas sort of converged and then splurged out into the script about um, sort of uh, a, a paganized version of Christianity and sea monsters. He, I mentioned the suit earlier. Uh, and you'll have to um, excuse me for the colours on screen here. So I mentioned the suit earlier, uh, and one of the experiments I did there was to try and paste the lettering without looking at the pages I was using. So I'd written the script, um, and I'd written the whole thing out. Uh, I had written it in sort of caption, caption length sentences and so with those i set up eight pages 
of empty um, empty space and then lettered directly into the empty space and, pa and paste the words in a way that I felt worked. Um, and then what I did, and so you can see here, so the, the pink is the actual artwork space and then the green is where the bleed and trim would go. Um, and then what I did was I copied and pasted artwork randomly into those behind the letters. So I, I knew which eight pages I wanted to use, but um, I didn't select which ones are going to go in first. And sometimes that worked incredibly well, better than I could have hoped. And so you can see here that um, these two boxes have lined up perfectly into these. Uh, th these sets of captions have lined up perfectly into these boxes. Uh, and this one crosses over, but that's fine because it causes its own little effect. On the right hand page, the captions do not fit into the artwork well at all, uh, which uh, causes its own sort of friction, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the whole the whole comic is about uh, the anxiety of going shopping and not really knowing what I was doing, uh, and it sort of works. Uh, and I really liked the, the comic that came out of the, that experiment. Um, then we come on to sort of narrative. So uh, what abs what my way of making abstract comics does is that I can write the story I want and not worry about whether the artwork is telling that story as long as the mood in the artwork matches the tone that I want uh, or sometimes contrasts it you know sometimes you, you want a bit of uh, you want it to match exactly um, then I can tell any story I want uh, in this instance this is the first time I did it uh, fully intentionally it was a comic called A Hill to Cry Home because I decided one day that I wanted to write a ghost story and so um, I had a pile of pages uh, which is just in a folder called Explosive Sweet Freezer Razors and I've just been building up I think I had about 50 at the time maybe more and so I picked out the ones which I thought would work really well and then wrote to those you can see there's th three sections, but I've put two on the screen. Uh, on the left-hand side is the voice of the... There's a narrator who tells the plot, uh, and that person's page is a sort of... quite They're uh, black and white. Um, they're quite plain and unexciting, uh, which sort of sits in the within the mood of what's happening in the story. Uh, it's quite a sullen, sullen tale. Uh, and then on the right hand side you can see that things get uh, much more energetic uh, the letters are, have pink backgrounds uh, and this is the voice of the ghost uh, that, that appears uh, towards the end of the story um, and again I think that, that comic worked really well um, but I didn't have to worry about the pictures telling the story only setting the mood um, I've called this one meaning outside of meaning um, and what I mean with that um, is that uh, we're especially in this the graphic novel found forest floor which I created with my sort of um, collaborator um, Eric Blugsved who wrote the words is that what fo found forest floor does is it exploits the brain's um, the human brain wants to make sense of what it's been presented with and when it doesn't it tries a little bit harder and that's where you get things like um, pareidolia and apophenia and, and stuff like that sort of like um, psychological terms that people may or may not be familiar with but with down for us floor there was no the, the images didn't correlate to anything real uh, and so the brain would be looking for sense in the text but the text didn't correspond to anything real either uh, this is an example where i created this page and then i flipped the letters so they're backwards and they're an exact mirror image apart from this bit here so where plume your boss of one truth in spacious failure um, the mirror ver the mirror universe version of that is cooked inside total anything outer roast lessons um, and so when you're reading it or at least when i'm reading it i can't say for you but when i'm reading it my brain is trying to make sense of this and try to 
add meaning on to contextualize it and to make it make sense and it doesn't and what happens is that there's a little scratch at the back of my brain um uh which is really it's a satisfying irritant if that makes any sense at all so uh yeah the process of experimentation that came out with this that the result of it was a product which sort of made my brain itch um <laughs> in a pleasing way um and then we've got meaning outside of meaning then we've got narrative outside of meaning so the comic children the valley uh it's one of the explosive sweet freeze razor stories and it's an abstract narrative comic no an abstract land abstract landscape comic where the landscape tells the narrative um you can see here the first and last page of the comic and then the actual story isn't told panel by panel but in the 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 the, the distance between these two pages um there's a change occurs uh, and so the the narrative happens but there's no this happens then this happens then this happens it all forms at once um i don't know if i've made any sense there at all and then finally um we're going to talk about moon put uh, moon <laughs> moon puke often mispronounced as moon puke um which has lots of things working in its favor uh so uh it's uh one of the last pieces of explosive sweet freeze razors to be finished but it's the one that i was working on for the longest the actual artwork is this little booklet so this is the cover uh, and this booklet is uh, an a6 folded over booklet of scrappy paper that, um, at one time was an abandoned set of spirograph drawings from my daughter when she was much younger which I put a staple through and then worked on over and over and over for for a long time it using highlighter pens and uh, parallel pens all sorts of nonsense uh, to, uh, to create this weird little book and it felt like a magic book in its own way and so um, I also thought that it felt like I knew that I wanted to tell a story about car parks and so this felt like the place to tell it and I also had this title moon puke which came from a section of found forest floor uh, that I wanted to use and so it, that's where the ideas started to come together but I had this little collection of artwork I had this title and I had this idea of making a comic about car parks uh, once I had the artwork all done I came up with a story about a person called Jonathan uh, and the actual story tells uh, the, the 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 comic tells the story of how Jonathan as he becomes more and more isolated from the people around him becomes more and more linked in with this uh, with the idea of um, traveling to car parks mentally like he starts um uh, what's the word astrally projecting into car parks because uh, that's where he feels comfortable um and so that story plays over the top of the artwork in these captions uh in the background you can see the little booklet that i started off talking about so this is the first and second page and the booklet's quite a long way away from the viewer and there's all this trash around um, I don't know if you can make it out, but under here is my foot. There's a copy of Silver Surfer Black, which I hadn't realized. I've got a glass desk, um, my scissors, my little Allen key thing, um, uh, merriment wrappers, all, all this crap. I, that's not important. I don't know why I'm telling you that. Um, and so that sits there and that beca that forms the comic. But at this stage, it's not the comic. Uh, the comic's too far away for these captions to sit in it. Um, what i liked about this idea is that by separating the artwork from the narrative it creates this sort of meta narrative of someone interacting with this book so in my mind although i created this weird little book somebody else either found it or created it and it's its own little story in itself like moving page to page in this little book is a second narrative to the main moon puke narrative um you can see here further on in the comic 
um, this this on the right hand side is sort of that same view but the captions have moved into the panels of the artwork not exactly but near enough uh, and they've also um, tilted with the tilt of the comic in the photos um, as the narrative and the artwork sort of join together um, which is a really nice effect and the other thing I, I, I took I didn't just take one set of photos I took three uh, and so as the comic progresses it flicks between these different sets of photos which creates uh, breaks in the narrative and um, uh, <laughs> creates breaks in the narrative and also um, helps change the tone slightly so you've got this slightly clinical bit here um, and I can't tell you how it works I just sort of as I I've, as I've read it and I've read it a lot now um, it works and I should say um, th this idea of the the text um, sort of tilting in line with the page came from Ken Reynolds who did some some editing on this and did an amazing job um, and then finally for my slide deck I have this section of the comic which comes right towards the end where the narrative is totally abandoned the zoom on the artwork is extreme uh, and it acts like um, as close to um, an impact as you can get I think uh, this is these are from where the page is scanned so you can see that's why it's all blurry because this scanner has terrible focus um, and it happens at a point in the comic um, where something surprising has just happened um, and sort of acts as as I said an impact or a trip over one of the things I like doing in comics when I make them is as well as like setting up this rhythm which moves very steadily as you could see on here um, the captions are paced out quite evenly across the page uh, and that that happens out throughout the book um, and then at this point that is totally abandoned there's there's no words on the page uh, and it acts as sort of a an impact um, and that is the end of my slides I don't think I yeah I, guess I did I put a little thanks on um, so uh, this is me Gareth A. Hopkins um, you can go to my website there's some free comics there if you want to look at them um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as at Gerfink and I also have a Patreon which I mentioned earlier where the sluice is happening um, and you can go there and sign up for as little as a pound a month. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting somehow.